Elton John's drummer says he still has arguments with his boss, but he loves his job. I'm John Bone from Rock History Music. The name Nigel Olsen is not a household name, but ask any Elton John fan, and his impressive reputation will be lauded. Olsen goes so far back with Elton John that he first knew him under his given name, Reginald Dwight. As a drummer, I've always been impressed by the fact that he's not showy. He never overplays, which makes him the king of less is more. But we should also remember Elton has always picked amazing drummers to play with through the years, each with their own unique styles. As for Olsen, he told Chronicle Live he and Elton can still get into it after all these years. We have moodies now and again, but it doesn't affect us as we've been through it before. He'll get over it, he'll be fine tomorrow. It's really amazing, it's like family. We have our good days and our bad days. Okay days, fantastic and wonderful days. The Aquarian, who's now 67, goes way back with Elton to that very first album, Empty Sky, in 1969, when he shared the drumming duties with Roger Pope. They also tag team along with Barry Morgan on Elton's third album, 1970's Tumbleweed Connection, and Nigel and Roger shared again on Elton's Mad Men Across the Water from 1971. Just to give you an idea on how far back Nigel goes with Elton John, he played on almost all of his big hits from the 70s, including Daniel, Rocket Man, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, Someone Save My Life Tonight, Philadelphia Freedom, and a host of others. Olsen says, as long as we make people smile and we do something to give back what they give to us, then our job is done. It's an amazing life and I wouldn't want it any other way. The drummer was famously fired in 1975 along with late great bassist Dee Murray after the recording of Captain Fantastic and the Brown Deer Cowboy. And he was replaced by that other drummer, Roger Pope. But when the dust settles, Nigel looks back with a big smile, saying, it's been a life of total blessed moments. I'm still very blessed to see it evolve to what it is now. Pope died in September 2013, and his widow, Sue Pope, is very open about the fact that there was not really a rivalry or hatred between Roger and Nigel. In fact, she posted pictures of Nigel that were taken by Roger. Sue Pope told us she's only met Nigel twice, backstage at Madison Square Garden in 2000 and in Southampton a few years back. She says, I didn't notice anything but friendliness between them. At Madison, when I was introduced to Nigel, he gave me a big hug and he was physically shaking. I said, Nigel, are you okay? He said, I'm shaking because I'm going to play Tiny Dancer knowing that Roger Pope is in the audience. Interestingly, at that time, Kurt Biscara was the second drummer on stage. Sue recalls Roger telling the drummers that he was jealous because he wanted to be up there with them. And they said he really ought to. And to be clear, Sue Pope says, I'm sure there's rivalry between all drummers. They all want the top jobs, of course, but that doesn't mean there's any animosity between them, as some fans tried to stir up. After leaving Elton's band, Pope, along with guitarist Caleb Coy and bassist Kenny Passarelli, joined Hall & Oates on the road and on record. And for Nigel Olsen, he was back in the fold with Elton John in 1980 with the 21 and 33 album. Elton's played with a lot of very impressive drummers through the years, including the late great Jeff Beccaro, Jay Bellarose, Jim Keltner, and for quite a long time, Charlie Morgan. Make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel. We will also check out your videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.